Hello everyone, Kevin's here, and today we're gonna make a 1v1 me with Valentin. So first I will introduce myself and then you can introduce yourself, Valentin. Yeah. So I'm the <laughs> so I'm the ecosystem marketing manager at Zilica. What's about you? Tell me more. I'm head of the gaming technology here at Zilica. That's amazing. It's always a pleasure to talk with you, Valentin. So I will have a quick question for you. Shoot. <laughs> What's your background gaming and game developing? Could you tell me more about that? Yeah, I think I should start a bit about the software. I have like almost two decades of making uh, engineering software. Not necessarily, I didn't start it with, with gaming per se, but uh, more on the embedded side, more on the web and online things. But in the past six to seven years, I've been involved in a major AAA gaming studio in the US. Uh, another uh, company that was around Social Casino, again, Forbes 500 level. And then I had my own gaming studio where I did a very nice exit uh, recently. So now I'm happy to be here and really running the things around the, the gaming technology in, in Zilliga. It's always a pleasure and you have really an impressive background. I'll be fully honest, that's really impressive. Thank you, my friend. But I, I could ask you the same stuff. What's what's your take on, on the FPS games? What's your background on, on all this? So I was a pro gamer for Counter-Strike. I started with 1.3 and moved it to 1.6 Counter-Strike and then to Counter-Strike Global Offensive. I still play a lot of FPS. I play Call of Duty. I play Apex Legend, PUBG. I still play a lot of Counter-Strike also. But my main vision behind the FPS is the mechanism behind it, the recoil, the management of the bullets, how it's hit. Of course, the tick rate of the server is really important for me also. But I love FPS games. <laughs> I know we, we keep playing them like <laughs> absolutely quite often, quite often. Then. <laughs> so could you tell me more about your role in Zilica? Look, in the, the fancy title is head of the gaming technology, but the, the reality in respect to the role and the responsibilities is uh, driving from uh, driving the whole gaming stuff that we do in respect of the technology, the, the way we organize the projects. And I intentionally said projects in plural because to make games, you need to have the right tool and the, the right platform and the right roadmap to do all this. Um, what I do per se, I'm leading the, the gaming tech division by having the, the three teams that develop the uh, Unity SDK based on our Zilliqa blockchain, the gaming team that creates all the games that are based, that are using this SDK and we are making now an FPS shooter. I'm going to talk a bit more about that later on. And also, it's just as a heads up, we are creating the so-called gaming hub, which tends to be the steam for the blockchain games. Just to give you an example of what we do. I lead the team's technology level, architecture level, even code review, and a lot, a lot, a lot of code being written by myself. That's I'm really hiring, good. by the way, and I'm hiring guys. So <laughs> a developer, a senior developer in Unity. Give us a, a join good. us, guys. We are friendly, and of course, we are super happy. Yeah, no, how about your your own role here in Zilliqa? What what is that about? So I'm the ecosystem marketing manager. My main task is to make Zilliqa shine as the ecosystem. I want to bring all the ecosystem together to help them as much as I can. But at the same time, I'm trying to talk more about Zilliqa on the different let's say media possible as twitter as youtube to basically make zilica shine and mostly our ecosystem is growing a lot so i'm contacting sometime investor reviewing some tokenomics and actually that's kind of cool because we are working together on the on the how fps game but we, we will go later on and my main focus is to bring a kind of tokenomics out on this game to make it great you said tokenomics just explain the, the audience a bit what that means. So a tokenomics is basically the economy of the game or the economy of a token. My main goal is to create a good economy around our game so that people have fun, but at the same time can have, let's say, some pleasure to play and some reward for playing. Because for me, the time spent on anything is really important. And if you get rewarded for that, it's incredible. Wonderful. But and all these rewards and all this um, thing happens on, on the Zilliqa blockchain, right? 
Absolutely. Why not on Ethereum? Why not on Solana or Polygon? Why? 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 Oh. Why Zilliqa? Because yeah. for me, Zilliqa have the biggest potential for that as the blockchain. But at the same time, with the different partners, we have a lot of team of esport team as partners. We have Ninjas in Pyjama, who is literally the top world CSGO team. For, of course, me as a background of programmer and Counter Strike, I love it. So it was. It, it was obvious. It was really obvious that uh, Zilika was the best change for that. And at the same time, with the different recruitment we have, like you, who is basically the top tier level for developing any game, it makes sense for to choose Zilika to develop a FPS game or any game instead of Ethereum, where basically the fees would have killed any game. Because when you pay twenty dollars to just make an exchange on Ethereum, that's a lot, and not everyone can afford it. While on Zilika, it costs few cents. And I think in addition to this, we need to mention that we have basically the, the blockchain, we have the token, and the tokens, we can say. Then we have the tools, the SDK. Now we have Absolutely. the game. We're having the platform to publish the games and to have a community around the games or that future gaming hub to be launched uh, maybe at the same time with the game. And we have the esports, as you said. So we have the full circle. Absolutely. And I think, at least for my own research, we are the only company on the blockchain space that has all this covered. I mean, I, I'm much more than I agree with you around that, actually. And you, you left up a good question because you said you are building an SDK. Can you tell me more about the graphic engine you are using and mostly why did you choose this one? So the SDK, first of all, is built for Unity because uh, currently uh, nine out of 10 games on blockchain are with Unity. And Unity as a graphical engine, well, Unity 3D. Unity engine gives you, you as a small studio or even as a big studio to use smaller teams in respect to creating a game. No matter if it's something, what we like to call a double A game or even a triple A game, you can use less headcount, less engineers to develop these kind of games. That's one. The second reason is that Unity is a bit much easier to use. It's easier to find the, the engineers in respect to that. Like the, it's using C Sharp, and basically any .NET developer can jump on Unity, learn the bits and bolts there. And I know you are doing some trainings on that also, which is super cool. Um, the, you can develop a game very fast. And from my own past experience in my own gaming studio, it was much easier to develop games with a small headcount than it was with Unreal or Godot or, or any other more closed source um, graphical engines. And the SDK has been the starting point. Then the game was easy for us to say, yeah, let's go also with Unity because we have the SDK now. It's The game basically becomes a program pilot, a showcase, but we do invest a lot mentally, technologically, <laughs> and financially to get this game properly done and have the same kind of features we have in Valorant, Counter-Strike, and any other FPS games. But yes, these are big words. Yeah, those are the big boys in respect to our just started game to be developed. Absolutely. Um, I think when, when we started to, to talk about the game, we said about a bit earlier about the game. And I, I remember the, the meeting where we said, hey, let's make a game. And you and I started instantly to say, hey, shooter game. Must be a shooter game. Can you tell the guys what was your idea behind the the, this choice that's a really good question actually i like it so we could have choose like a card game but the card game everyone is doing card game around nfts we could have done let's say a kind of casino game it's not interesting we wanted something difficult to build something that's no other blockchain is focused on and that's the reason why we gone for the shooter game with our previous experience you developed some shooter games also. And me, as a pro, as a pro player of Counter-Strike, it seems obvious that we wanted a shooter game because we could build the best one. We have the best mechanics, like we were thinking how to basically develop it. And for me, a shooter game, it was obvious. Like, there was no other choice. I wanted a shooter game. I With the eSport team we have, they are focused on, on shooter games also. It was much more than obvious. And I think we gone well. And we are working day and night around this. So I'm really happy about what we did. Yeah. And if you remember, we did for car and we tried to see how a car game would go. Mm. Good number, and easy game, but we don't go after the easy path all the time, right? So we chosen yeah. the shooter because we, we love them. We had the know-how. 
we've built a team, we added the technology and hey, we are building, I think with the top notch technology wise, we are using the latest and greatest, and I think the most performant network stack. We are using the latest Unity version, which is 2021, the LTS, the long-term support one. Uh, we are uh, trying to, for, to, to publish this game for Windows and Mac at the beginning, and maybe later on. But this is a problem with Apple mainly in respect to how blockchain application, because well, the game itself is still on blockchain, will be. So probably on, on mobiles, at least Android, Let's see with Apple how it goes. Let's see. It's still an open discussion there. Absolutely. And I was mentioning about the engine before. So what platform and why mostly are on this? Well, of course, we go after the PC here, right? Absolutely. Or, Mac, or even Linux. It's one click away from us to, to do it for in, in, in this way. In, in the sense that the, the regular shooter players are on PC or consoles. But get, getting a blockchain-based game on consoles is quite tough. I'm not sure that if Xbox, if Microsoft, or and Sony are open for this yet. Probably they will anytime soon. But if you are chasing the the deer, we're gonna go in the forest, right? So for us, searching for the players that are going on on shooters, it was easy to say PC, maybe Mac, just so we have a, a bigger ecosystem, and maybe even Linux. So that's the reason we are going there, to attract more players from this space that want to go from regular games to play to earn. And play to earn, I think it's another term you should explain to, to, the, to our audience. Absolutely. So most of the game on the blockchain are focused on the play to earns. While me, I don't really like the term of play to earn. And with a shooter game, I don't think it can really apply. So let's say how a shooter game will be a bit focused on, let's say, the skills to earn. You need to train as any shooters. If you play Counter-Strike, you need to train on the training map to be better. And on Apex Legend, it's the same. You need to go to the firing range to train. And that's where actually I lead it. Like, I want to have a game where it's based on the skills to earn. I don't want to basically everyone get a lot of money, it's become a Ponzi, and basically the token go to zero. My main goal is when I create an economy, I want a game. I'm focused mostly into rewarding the good players. And this is why it's the skills to earn more than a play to earn. Of course, we're going to make special events, but that's we're going too much in details and we don't want to reveal everything. But let's say, if, for me, the shooter game will be the best and not necessarily a play to earn, more skills to earn. Yeah, and so far in our shooter, the, the mechanics, the game, the gameplay is with the same smoothness you have in Valorant or, or Counter-Strike because we do love the game. We do like the community that has been built around these games and the fact that you go there not necessarily for the graphics, but maybe about the gameplay itself, the fact that you have a nice environment, you have the feeling, the look and feel that you really want to, to, to have. You, you feel the game responsive enough when you move the mouse and your character just rotates, you see the enemy and bang, you shoot him up. Absolutely. Yep. But just before you ask me why did we choose a shooter, I could ask you the same question, actually. Why did we want it to have a shooter? Look, I, I did a lot in Activision in respect to the shooters. I'm not going to say the title here. I'm not going to advertise that. But you can figure it out which one. Um, uh, and I really enjoyed working there. A lot on the level design, a lot on the architecture and the back end, but also on, on the the feeling that you get from a shooter, right? With you, and I think even on Steam and even on other distribution channels for games, shooters are like the top five will see more shooters than any other types of games. But I do play other types of games. So I do play role-playing. I do play uh, uh, turn-based games or city builders. But when the shooters is something like, hey, we have five minutes during the, the coffee. Let's play a game. Let's see who's the best on that map. So our game was uh, to go away, a <laughs> to-go idea. Hey, let's make a shooter. We have the know-how. We know the knowledge. We know how to build a, a map. And you said training map. This is exactly what I'm working as we speak now. I cannot share my screen, I don't want to do any spoilers, but our so-called third map in development is the training map, because until we release the game publicly with all the multiplayer and so on, I want people to be able to play the training, at least the internal or external collaborators that test the game now, to have, to have some fun, to test, to improve their skills, so when we open the game, they have some leverage against us. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I really love it.
come on, ask me more. Mm, so you say the shooter, and that's true. We gone into a shooter. The question was, why not a triple A games with the best graphics possible? Why did we okay. choose a low poly? And mostly, uh, why did you choose a low poly? All right, this is the big elephant actually in the room. You know, we keep getting this as like the graphics don't look nice. That this is like 1995 cold, and they want the graphics back. No, guys, look, we are trying to make a game, a, a program pilot, but fully developed as a regular game. All the way we're organizing the development work, the creative work is like with any AAA games. We cannot reach that now at the beginning. We are still exploring stuff. We are still learning stuff. So if we go with the best of the best things and we fail, oh, these guys failed with the biggest and nicest graphics. So I said, no, let's go after everybody to be able to play this game. And a low poly game, Actually, the low poly environments are something to that are jumping in in the sense that people are really looking into that. Think about Minecraft. Think about many other games that have a low poly environment. Let's do that, I said, because I want everybody from a very expensive, maybe house level <laughs> price tag computer all the way to the so-called potato computers without any, <laughs> without trying to <laughs> make any people angry, but I want everybody to be able to play our games, our game now, this shooter, to earn things and enjoy that. And if we go, let's say on mobiles, maybe, you cannot run AAA graphics there. And Absolutely. if you take a look at PUBG, Call of Duty, and a few others, you're gonna see a different graphics set, a different way of looking, a different experience, while our game will be looking and feeling the same, of course. You need to use the, the controller or the touchscreen rather than a mouse and a keyboard. So I want to have a very congruent experience across Absolutely. PC, Mac, mobiles, and so on, and, and tablets maybe. You said something really interesting, actually, because you wanted to make everyone being able to play it, to have fun and to enjoy it. And at the same time, I think that the low poly allowed this by having smooth image, smooth movement, and not having a shutter where basically you have some lag or some FPS drop. And yeah. that's the main part. And that's why I'm really happy that we choose it, this one. Yeah, but if you think about the multiplayer stack, uh, you're usually, what happens in the, the, the regular AAA games, let's say, your game lags for two reasons. Either you don't have enough computing power to handle all the traffic, that means either you don't have the best uh, internet access, or you don't have the best GPU or CPU to handle all the computation, the, the, the graphics side and all the data to be uh, computed and calculated on your side. So I said, okay, we're going to use the best network stack and the one that uses less network traffic which is Photon Fusion, and thank you guys from Exit Games for providing me the latest stack. Uh, and also on the on the GPU side, the low poly don't consume that much computing power. You don't need the latest GPU. You don't need to sell your house to get the latest video card so we can play uh, this game. And this, in this sense, we want everybody to play the game, enjoy the game, and not to have very big uh, to have on the game a very big price tag. This is the whole reason for all these technology choices that we did. And please, guys, understand, we can do AAA graphics. Trust me, one of our future games will be amazingly nice looking. We are already drafting ideas and, and graphic sets, and we are working on those, those, those sides already. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you are learning things, and I like that. Um, do you love working with me and the dev guys? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think <laughs> one has now? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry? Do you love working with us, the developers, the technical guys? Honestly, I love it because I'm learning every day. You know, it's not like simply I'm waking up in the morning, having the same task to do. And that's why I love to walk in the web tree. And mostly with you guys, because you're teaching me a lot. How work a playbook, as an example. What this collider on this map, how it was done with Unity and all this. And for me, it's it's another experience that I never had. So I'm learning every day. And when you learn new things, you're happy in life. You feel happy to, to have more knowledge in the end. And that's really important for me. I already know all about DeFi, about Web3, about liquidity pool, about all this. But about the game himself, even as a pro player and who played a lot of games, I, I never explored the back scene, let's say, or the backstage of the game. And this yep. is why I'm so happy to work with you. Because you are teaching me and learning me a lot. Glad to hear. Glad to hear. I mean, you see the hard work even to make 
Oh, we yeah. the map we published, the, the container map that you, anybody can see now in the teaser, you've seen how the colliders work, how we added those uh, holes in the, in the container so we, we can shoot through them and how that worked, starting with a container that didn't have the holes, or the part where you are walking on, on top of it and you, you just change and your recoil gets affected because you are either walking on the, the upper side or the lower side. These small details is actually what we are looking for. So the gameplay experience is extremely good. At level design, and even that, as you said, the, the colliders, which are the main issue <laughs> all around in any game, like, did I hit that guy? Or my side was showing me the, the, the impact, but it actually didn't hit or shut him down. So it's on that side is the reason we are doing what we are doing. The small details or the devil is, in, is indeed in the, de in, the, in the details. Absolutely. You mentioned actually me working with you as the team, but how many development team you have? How large it is? The dev team of currently we are uh, with me included four guys and a, a fifth guy to join uh, in July. I'm trying to recruit only top senior fellows that have a lot of experience on, on Unity and maybe some blockchain knowledge. Of course, the guys in the SDK team, they are extremely savvy in what blockchain means, but they have the, the, the unity on the side, while on the gaming team, they are mostly like eight, 10 years plus in, in unity, in game development, either in big companies or their own studios, but they still have the experience. Absolutely. The it's, desire. Yeah. it's really a top tier S team, let's say, like the best of the best. And that's why I'm so happy actually to work with you guys, because yeah. you can learn li literally from the best. And that's not, let's say, possible in every company. That's why I'm so happy to be with you. Yeah, and, and you see how we work. I mean, I, I said in the previous videos we have uh, online, I'm going for the quality. I'm, I'm always testing the things of the guys are testing, but we try to keep up the quality level extremely high because this is basically what the player, the end user will gonna enjoy, will, will look forward. Hey. I can play that. I have no lag. I entered a room. I had all my enemies there. I managed to shoot them all. Hey, I'm so happy about that. But not all these things are, are easy. And I, I'm sure you... And well, actually, can you tell me what was the, 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 the biggest, the, large, the, the most difficult topic you had to face during this early phase of the development cycle with us? It's, it was mostly, I think, making all the research, all the understanding, the, vocali uh, the vocabulary around this, how basically things are done in the basic. And for me, who had no experience, let's say, on building games, it wasn't easy to understand it fully. I had to make more research during the night and sometimes during really early in the morning to understand you fully. But now that's we speak the same language. Yeah. It's so it's so yeah. cool. It's It's so easy. And let's say... It, we communicate super smooth together. And that's really, for me, a good point. I'm already feeling like I reached a new level. And that's where I'm so happy to work with you, to learn from you. And that's really cool, actually. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> what was actually, it's funny because it's a good question, I think. What was the biggest and most difficult tech topic you and the team faced during the development? Well, we're actually still facing it. We just started working on the multiplayer stack. And I, I, I really want, being a, something quite new, it's still under a, a beta version, it's not fully published online. And we are still trying to optimize the level of, of details on, on, the, on the multiplayer stack in respect to the traffic. And so, to put it in other words, so the players don't have any lag, any rubber banding. And you guys, I'm sure you know the, the wording around this. I want people to enjoy, no matter if you are on a 4G connection or you have a, I don't know, one gigabit uh, Ethernet link, I want you to enjoy the game like everybody else in the, in the in the same match with you. So we are optimizing extremely, at extreme level, the, the network stack in order to have very good performance and the gameplay not to be affected. As I said, I usually on regular games say, this is a bad game if I'm lagging or something bad happens. And especially at the opening days, Things don't go very well. I want not. I really try to avoid these these scenarios on on our side. When I say multiplayer, it's currently the biggest topic, and it's usually around any multiplayer games. This part is the the, the most important and most critical one. Absolutely, absolutely. That's true. That we are aiming for the only multiplayer part. Let's say mostly focus on all around this, all the interaction. So my my second question will be a bit different. But what are the the gaming department future plan? Basically, what's your ideas around all this? 
Look, it's it's about finalizing the game, of course, and have several gaming modes available for any players. Of course, we are uh, trying to have all the ideas and all the content spread uh, on a seasonal level. Yes, guys, we're going to have seasons. We're going to have battle passes. And then to build even more games, to have some kind of um, economy and uh, ideas and strategies like we have with this game. Yes, it is again. It's a program pilot for us. It's about us learning things, how to properly address them. But we are making uh, all the architecture, not only on the on the tech side, but also on the business side, to be extremely flexible so we can adapt to what the community is going to say during season one, after season one, during season two, after season two. And of course, this will be possible because we are also building the gaming hub, the, the so-called uh, crypto-related, blockchain-related Steam so we can hear to what you guys have to, to tell us. Like, hey, this doesn't work well, or we have an issue with some map element, or maybe you can improve something, or this weapon is too OP, or it should be nerfed, or these kind of topics we are really keen to, to listen from the community. I think this will be the major plan I'm having now, to listen to the community input and go in that direction and, and, and have that input there. Absolutely. You, you're absolutely right about that. All the feedbacks for us is gold, basically, because every feedback tell us if we manage to do it great or bad. And if it's bad, we can always think, how can we fix it? How can we rework it? And that's really important. Actually, you mentioned something great, like you want to build the game around the ecosystem also. And that's true. How games will be listed with the gaming hub, with how the ecosystem, how main goal is literally to link all the Zilliqa blockchain all together. And I think so far we really succeed. So you enjoy working with us, the team, I mean, the dev team and the marketing team and the business development team. Absolutely not. I will never. I'm joking. Of course, I love it. It was an amazing experience. And we are still at the early stage. We are going forward all together. So, of course, I love it. I'm learning so much. I'm, make, I'm happy every morning when I'm getting up because I'm working on things that I love. And that's amazing. Yeah, but I mean, the, the passion level and the, the way we are doing it, it's, it's, it's crazy. Game are good. games. But it's also gaming-related business guys that come up with the technical aspects, with the, the big business side that we put all inside this game. We're not going to build much, much more. And with with fellows like Kevin and uh, other other gentlemen that we have in the team and ladies, I think we can do even AAA level of games. Absolutely. So the big boys should watch out what we are planning to do and what we're going to demo soon enough. No, I absolutely agree. I mean, it's amazing, actually, to, to have a team like you to learn from the best and at the same time to have fun, to enjoy what we are doing, to enjoy building around it. It's super amazing. And honestly, I will definitely keep doing that because this is great. Well, then I think with this, we, we wrap up all the questions. I, have, I, yep. have, I don't have any others for you. Maybe in the next episode. For sure, for the next episode, let's think about that. But definitely, it was a great gaming session. Always a pleasure to talk with you, to show to the people what we are doing. How do we enjoy to work around this? It's always a pleasure. So guys, we wish you the best. See you soon for the next episode. And we will keep you tuned. Cheers.